Welcome back to Quick Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to quickly set up hotkeys in OBS to make your streaming experience quicker, easier, and even safer. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. So the first thing you need to do to set up your hotkeys is go to the file tab right at the top of OBS and click on settings and then you need to click on the hotkeys button. The way this organized can be a bit confusing. All these controls right at the top are for the controls of your stream. These are the master things like start streaming, stop streaming. This is really what you need to change if you want to make your streaming experience a bit safer. The next few things that you'll see are all of your scenes. This can be a bit confusing because it is in alphabetical order. It is not in the order that you see the scenes right down here. If you're setting up like scene one is hotkey number one, scene two hotkey number two, and so on, you might get that a bit mixed up. I've done that in the past, so just make sure to look at the scene that you're choosing and then look at the scene in the order in which it's here. And this only allows you to change the visual elements of your scenes. You're not going to be able to control any audio right from here. If we scroll down a bit further, now you can control the audio of each device. Right here we have the alerts. This is a browser source. If you want to be able to mute like Streamlabs if it's giving you a lot of notifications and then you can control your audio input devices like your microphones and your audio output devices. Maybe if you have music playing through your desktop sounds you can also mute that right from here. So now what I'm going to do is set up some hotkeys. Make sure to do buttons that you're not going to be pressing a lot. If you set your hotkey as A whenever you're typing it's going to switch over to that scene. Let's say if you're doing a stream where you have a hotkey in a game but you accidentally set that as a hotkey for OBS it could really mess up your stream while you're trying to play your game. Game. Just make sure to do some sort of combination. I always like to do control and then a button. And this is one other thing to tell you right now. If you want to take away your hotkeys, the backspace key does actually count as a button that you can press for a hotkey. So instead of pressing backspace or delete, you need to go to the little trash can on the side right there to remove your hotkey. So I'm going to do control F1 for my first scene. For scene two, notice that's the third scene in succession. So I want that to be control F3 and then control F2 for my second scene. Now I'm going to go back up to scene one. Yeah, I can show and hide all of these different elements. This can be very helpful. Let's say if you want to change what's on your scene without creating a different scene. The best example of that is if you have something like this, where you want to show your display, but only part of the time. What you can do with hotkeys is in scene one, there's a show slash hide display capture. If I want to show that, I'm going to press control alt shift S and then control alt shift D to not show that. If I apply those and I press control alt shift to D that just goes away and right now I have it set to two different buttons but I believe you can set it to only one button so you only have to remember one thing to show that and hide it so I'm going to also have Control alt shift s to hide that and if I click on apply I can press s to show it and s to hide it now I'm going to get into some of the safety features if you really want to start streaming quickly you can set up a hotkey for that I wouldn't recommend that because if you somehow accidentally press that you could be streaming something that you really don't want <laughs> to be streamed but I would recommend and setting up a hotkey to stop streaming. If an emergency happens and you need to just get off air as fast as you can, all you have to do is press that button on your keyboard. So I'm going to set up something like Drill Alt Shift Q. There is a start and stop recording. That might be a bit more convenient if you're doing something like I am where I record my stream with OBS. I'll do Control Alt Shift W to start and stop recording. To pause the recording, I found that to be kind of interesting because there isn't a button on the GUI to pause the recording. I'm going to set that one is the same control alt shift with an E studio mode. This could be beneficial if you want to make changes on the fly. So I'll set that up as T. These are the only ones that I'd use personally. And one thing to note, they do give you an option to control an entire group individually. If you just put in like all of your Streamlabs notifications like I've done into a group, you can change it just like a scene so that you can disable the viewer for all the different Streamlabs notifications. But you still have to go through individually with all the browser sources and mute those probably control alt shift z to mute and unmute all of these again you can set up a hotkey for multiple different devices so this will allow me to do it all in one. Oh, i accidentally messed up right here it is in alphabetical order so i accidentally added that hotkey to music so i'm going to go and delete that and now for my music i'm going to add in a hotkey to mute that control alt shift m 
I guess. You would honestly have to write these all down because it does get a bit confusing. I'm going to add in one last safety measure to meet my audio input capture. I'm going to also enable that from my microphone. Now I'm going to click on apply for that. All right, so now I'm going to go and test the hotkeys that I just made. I always recommend that you do this before you start your stream just to ensure that you're not gonna mess something up while you're live or just to make sure that there aren't any conflicts. So I'm first going to make sure that my function keys work. F2 should switch to the next scene and F3 switches to my third monitor and it will switch back also. Now if I press Control alt shift w as you can see it starts recording. If I press that again, it will stop recording just to make it a bit faster for me. And if I press Control r the preview is disabled and my audio input device is disabled also. And if I press Control alt shift t it'll switch over to studio mode and I can make all my changes in the preview right here. The program still is not modified until I press that again and it will take the change in the program. And and finally, if I start playing some music and press M, that music mutes, and you can see that that mute applies on the audio mixer also. And so all my hotkeys are working out really well. I hope that I helped you really get some ideas on the different kinds of hotkeys and automation that you can apply to your stream. If you're really interested in this kind of stuff, it might be very difficult just to have all these different letters assigned to all these different functions. I either recommend purchasing a keyboard with dedicated hotkey buttons, or maybe even a mouse like this Logitech G602 which has all of these hotkeys embedded right onto the side. This is really nice if you want to do something really quick without even having to touch your keyboard. But I think the best device for controlling your stream is the Elgato Stream Deck. It comes in around $100, I think, for the regularly sized version. The beauty in that device is that, first of all, you can control other programs besides your stream. You can, like, send out a tweet notification when you've gone live. And it also has little images that you can apply to each of the hotkeys that you want. And also, there are different folders that you can also choose so you can have basically infinite hockey stored right into that stream deck. I haven't used it at all, but it's just something to consider if you really want to bring your automation to the next level. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye bye.